There's been a lot of tips over the years on how to beat Grandmaster Nightfalls, a lot of which has helped many players finally get their completion. But there are still players out there who struggle, and if you're one of those players, you've clicked on the right video. Hi, my name is Xenokai, and I've been playing Destiny since the Taken DLC in Destiny 1. It is a game that I have loved and cherished and have thousands and thousands and thousands of hours played. But I do also play solo, which has definitely made some activities harder, including Grandmaster Nightfalls, especially when you queue with randoms through, like, the Destiny app or etc. I actually had never beat a Grandmaster Nightfall until my 16th try on it, and it took a lot of experimenting to see what works and what's good, and that's why I'm making this video to help out my fellow Guardians. So if you can bear with me, we can hop right into this. Let's start off with weapons. Since I'm a returning player, I can't exactly say what's typically used at Nightfalls in the, at this point, but I can say I know that something that isn't as popular and isn't very used, and it should be because it is kind of a PvE carry, <clears throat> and that's Wish Ender. Now back when I played, Arbalist was kind of taking the world by storm at that time in PvE and PvP. The double linear media meta was very insane and was very efficient at melting bosses. The only thing is, special ammo obviously was a bit RMG and problematic, and I would find myself constantly running out of ammo for Arbalist, constantly having to use, you know, a very weak primary to try and kill very strong enemies because heavy ammo can also be sometimes hard to come by. <clears throat> so. I tried and tried again to beat a Grandmaster Nightfall, and I was struggling, and finally I decided to slot in Wish Ender. I had just recently got it, and, you know, I figured I'd give it a try, because it can also break barrier champions like, you know, Arbalist can. And I'm not gonna lie, this bow was an absolute game changer. This bow is an absolute beast that melts literally everything. It melts red bars, it melts mini bosses, it melts actual bosses, like... It is insane. It might not do necessarily as much as Arbalest, but with unlimited ammo, and it also just being viable to use constantly throughout the whole Grandmaster Nightfall, I mean, it would be almost stupid to not use this weapon. This thing is an absolute powerhouse, and I can't recommend it enough, and if you're not using it, you're honestly doing something wrong. But, <clears throat> maybe you don't have it. Or maybe you don't want to use it. Maybe you don't like it. Since we are on the topic of weapons, though, I can't forget to mention Lay Monarch. Now, this weapon wasn't really slept on back in the day, but I don't really see it too much nowadays, which is kind of weird. Um, and since I've just returned back to Destiny 2, not seeing it is almost a bit of a shame because this weapon is an absolute unit as well. Just using it in the new activity that came with the Witch Queen, I was actually pleasantly surprised at how good it was, almost like it felt better than back in the day. Now, you know when the groups of enemies will spawn when you get to the final boss area in, in the, you know, new event? I was sitting up top there just shooting one of the guys, and the poison was spreading to all of them. I was killing up to, like, eight enemies per arrow, and I was doing that constantly. I think in that nightfall, I had 300 kills, maybe more or less like 277 to be exact, and... The closest teammate I had had 107 kills. Like, this bow literally carries. It, it is extremely good at killing, you know, lower tier enemy levels, or lower leveled enemies and lower tiered enemies. The poison is absolutely insane and destroys red bars, so if you're using it in a Grandmaster Nightfall and shooting yellow bars or mini bosses or even the actual boss, the poison will spread and damage other enemies. This thing is actu actually insane, especially if you are going for like an AoE type build. I mean, it's an absolute unit and also a powerhouse, and just a few arrows can rack you up all the way to 40 kills. And not only to mention, um, this thing is very good with overload champions because it has the perk to take them down and overload them, which, um, you know, in the meta right now, there's not a lot of guns that I enjoy using that doing that do that. So this bow is a very good replacement for that. And I wouldn't do a single Grandmaster Nightfall with either Lay Monarch or Wish Ender. It just wouldn't make any sense to me if I'm being honest. And uh, I would definitely use one of those two if you're trying to get your first clear. 
Now, aside from weapons, I also think it mat I also think it matters a lot what class you're using. And I would like to say um, before I get into this, I don't have m much experience with Strand since I'm just coming back. I currently only have it unlocked for my Warlock, and I don't really have any of the aspects, so I can't say if it is viable or not viable compared to these other setups. <clears throat> I'm just going off of what I know and what's worked to help me get the Conqueror title, which I do have. Um, <clears throat> so based on what I know and what I've experienced and the struggle I've went through in beating Nightfalls, I can say for sure that these three class setups are still going to be extremely viable and probably carry you to a win. We're going to start off with a hunter. <clears throat> I used to main hunter before I switched to warlock. You know, I, I just love warlocks now. Uh, this class can actually really excel in Nightfalls if the right exotics are paired up with the right class, specifically the void class. I'm sure you kind of may see where I'm getting at here, and that's the invisible hunter. The Invis Hunter has always been strong throughout PvE and PvP, but in Nightfalls it can really shine, especially because the amount of times the Invis Hunter has saved us from wiping and the amount of times I have saved, saved the team from wiping in a Grandmaster Nightfall is pretty insane, and that's mainly because of reses. Now, people are going to die in Grandmaster Nightfalls. It's almost impossible to avoid. It's going to happen. The enemies are hitting hard. The enemies are... There's way more enemies. It's just, it's a very difficult activity. And a lot of people, you know, struggle with it. And the Invis Hunter can kind of save you there because you can go invisible. You can raise your teammates. You can make your teammates invisible, which gives them time to heal or, you know, whatever. And with the setup that I had, I could almost always be invisible, like pretty much the whole time. So. I mean, this thing can literally carry, and enemies don't shoot at you when you're invisible, you know? And, uh, you know, obviously you need some exotics to really make this shine for the most part. My favorite at the time being was Graviton Forfeit. I mean, it literally almost made me indefinitely invisible throughout the whole thing. It's a bit more selfish, but I, I say selfish very reluctantly because... If you can constantly go invisible, if your teammates die, you can heal them. And if you do get good teammates and they can hold themselves for the most part, that's really all that's needed is making sure that you don't wipe. <clears throat> Though, obviously, you cannot forget Aminoculus. It is another powerhouse. Sadly, I don't have it, so I haven't used it. But at the time, it was very used, more used than Graviton. Because um, it not only makes it so you, you can go invisible more as well but you also get damage reduction for being invisible and it also gives your teammates damage reduction when you make them invisible now for my favorite class the warlock <clears throat> notorious for their op moves that always have to be nerfed whenever bungie decides to do anything with it um it is a very strong class even outside of the nerfs especially for grandmaster nightfalls specifically the best build in my opinion is the stasis warlock now, I kind of want you to hear me out because, you know, stasis is kind of like, kind of not, depends. Um, but this build specifically is quite insane, especially if you struggle in Nightfalls. And that's mainly because of one reason, um, the exotic Osmio Mancy Gloves. <clears throat> now, I'm sure most of you know what these are, but if you don't, I'll explain. This exotic gives you two cold snap grenades. And normally that wouldn't be a big deal because cold snap grenades, you know, might freeze a couple enemies, whatever. But if... You, this exotic allows you to consume those grenades to make a damn auto turret. And let me tell you, these auto turrets that shoot ice are insanely strong and really help out. They freeze everything they shoot, and the amount of times it saved my life or my teammate's life from getting overwhelmed or killed by a champion is literally unparalleled. In my opinion, Invis Hunter isn't as good as this class buildup, which... The Warlocks also have their healing rift, which really helps out the whole team a lot. And I mean, especially if you put this setup with Wish under Laminarch, it is a powerhouse. I mean, you get two turrets, it freezes literally everything. I remember there was a time um, in one of the Grandmaster Nightfalls, there was like two champions and like a ton of mobs. And this thing froze them all and basically saved our life and was the sole reason that we even got to complete that Nightfall that week. And, uh, you know, now, of course, we cannot forget the Cran Eat. I'm, my bad, I mean Titans, Bungie's favorite class who gets all the special treatment, though. Sorry, Titans, you guys probably need it, seeing as you guys 
obviously have a significantly lower IQ than the other two mains. But don't worry, we still love you guys. Just stop using shotguns in PvP. Enough is enough. Shotgun charging is ridiculous. But I digress. Arc Titan is also going to shine very bright here. And although Void is also significantly good, I would say that Arc might be a little better, especially because it outright puts out more damage than any of the other classes from the other two during Grandmaster Nightfalls. For a few reasons. One, Armentarium. <clears throat> Having two pulse grenades is insanely strong. I think everybody can recognize that. Pulse grenades do a ton of damage and back in the day I'm not so sure now they would also um, I think stun certain champions or you know whatnot so that was pretty crazy and uh, Thunder Crash is also very strong burst damage very good at clearing ads very good at taking down mini bosses champions whatever <clears throat> but speaking of Thunder Crash we obviously can't forget about the Curious of the Falling Star now that bad boy can really put some damage on some enemies, and if I'm being honest, having three titans run this is more than enough to clear Grandmaster Nightfall because you just hit for so much damage. If you, if you time it right, you can pretty much wipe out whole rooms of enemies. Though I don't know if I'd recommend this because um, I do think to do something like that, you would need to have some proper Nightfall experience and kind of know what you're doing. So it may not work as well, to be honest, if you are trying to get your first clear. Um, another honorable mention, since we're still on Titans, is Heart of the Innermost Light. It's not bad. It's worth using if you know what to do with it. I personally only used it a couple times, and the time that I used it, it was like glitch and giving me like infinite grenades. That's, I assume, fixed. So I'm not going to really say that's all that viable. But aside from all those things, <clears throat> there's really only one more thing you can do. That's kind of play slow. I mean, if you're struggling to beat a Grandmaster Nightfall, just take your time. It isn't really a race. Don't worry about the score until you've gotten a few clears, because it really doesn't matter. If you're just trying to get the Nightfall weapon, if you're just trying to get the clear, the Ascendant Shards, whatever, just play slow, pick off the enemies, play with your team. Don't overexpose yourself. It's not needed, because you'll just only end up getting yourself killed. The enemies in these Nightfalls are really no joke, and you can't just brute force it if I'm being honest and most importantly you, you just got to play with your team this is a three-person activity it isn't something you can just do on your own and think you'll carry the squad and be an army of one it's just it's not realistic even for the best of players if I'm being honest teamwork and strategy will always be the key to beating Grandmaster Nightfalls Anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching my video, and I hope some of this information ends up being very helpful and helps you get your first clear in the Season of the Witch on a Grandmaster Nightfall. When they open up, if you end up beating it and this video helped you, make sure to comment below and let me know. I'd love to know if this information really helped you beat any of those activities, or maybe any other activities, if I'm being honest, because these, these classes could very well help you in any other activity you're struggling with. So anyways, go and get on that grind and get your light level up to be ready for when the Grandmaster Nightfalls drop. And don't forget, good luck out there, Guardians. Peace out.